Hello everyone, this is the case of writing inguinal hernia. My first cross is on superficial ring and the second one is on deep inguinal ring. The dotted line you are seeing is connecting ASIS to the pubic tubercle and the deep ring is 1.25 cm above the midpoint of ASIS and pubic tubercle. Now start giving the incision from deep inguinal ring to superficial ring. Cutting the camper and the scarpa with subcutaneous tissue. Now we are holding the skin and cutting the subcutaneous tissue. Try to maintain hemostasis as much as possible in the early stages. Now we are holding the subcutaneous tissue and start cutting down the camper and scarpa. Now I am doing a blunt dissection using artery forcep to gain access into the external oblique aponeurosis. And now you can see a pearl white structure just beneath the camper and scarpa. This pearl white structure is external oblique aponeurosis. Now I am doing the blunt dissection using a mop or you can also use a peanut or a gauze piece. Just separating the tissues from the external oblique aponeurosis. Now you can appreciate the fiber of external oblique aponeurosis running in the same direction. I'm holding the superficial ring with my left index finger and cutting down the external oblique aponeurosis to gain access into the cord and the sac. Now I'm making a space for artery forcep and holding a flap of external oblique aponeurosis. And now we are dissecting it with the scissor and cutting down the fibers of external oblique aponeurosis in the same direction. Try to maintain hemostasis as much as possible in these stages. Now I am cutting down the fiber of external oblique aponeurosis in the direction of superficial ring. As you can see I am holding the superficial ring with my left index finger that makes the step easy and avoid any unnecessary injuries now doing a blunt dissection to separate the sac and the inner content from the flap of external oblique aponeurosis the white structure that you are seeing just right now is the conjoint tendon and these are the flap of external oblique aponeurosis for dissection you can use your finger, sometime a uh, gauze piece can do the job. As you can see, I'm using my left index finger and my thumb to hold the cord with the sack and try to deliver it outside so that we can start our work in separating the cord from the sack. As you can see, the cord with the sac is delivered. The white structure that you are seeing right now is the sac which is adhered to the cord. If you can appreciate there is a white thread in my left index finger that is the cord and the blue ribbon that you are seeing is the pampliform plexus that is attached to the sac and this one on my right hand side this is the sac that I am separating with the help of a mop. Now we are doing a blunt dissection to remove these clumsy additions. We can use our fingers 
or a mop or sometimes a scissor to remove these additions and separating the sack from the pempiform plexus or sometimes the glue cord and now you can see this white structure this is this is the cord and just by the side of the cord you can appreciate pemptiform plexus these are some clumsy additions between the cord and the pemptiform plexus and this one the blue structure that you are seeing is pemptiform plexus and as you can see i'm holding the sack in my right hand and now we are isolating the cord and the pemptiform plexus away from the sack and this isolation help us in separating the sac from the cord and avoid any other major injuries to the vessel and sometime to the cord and now i am removing the addition in between the cord and the sac as this is a very long standing case of inguinal hernia so it usually present with a little more additions as compared to a short period of history in other inguinal hernias i am using the electrocautery and try to maintain a bloodless field as much as possible and now we are separating the addition from the sac and now as you can see that my sac is almost clear from the additions these are some of the fine fringes that i have to remove before start working on the sac separately there are still some additions left and as you can see that i am using the electrocautery to remove this additions so as to maintain the hemostasis and there it is as you can see that we have separated the sac completely and now it's time to check our cord now this is the cord the white structure that you are seeing and there it is these are the pemptiform plexus hope you can appreciate it very clearly the pemptiform plexus and the cord we are isolating again and start working on sac now i am holding the sac with the artery forcep and we'll start cutting down the sac in between up to the bottom and now giving a nick with the scalpel and holding the edge of the sac with the artery forcep and that's the peritoneal fluid hope you can appreciate it now we are cutting down the sac up to the bottom reducing any content from the sac and now cutting the sac up to the bottom always be sure that there is no momentum or bowel 
just before you start the transfixation of the sack. As you can see that I am rotating the sack and start transfixing it with Vicryl 2.0. You can use Vicryl 1.0 or any other PDS. Try to avoid using catgut as the half-life of the catgut is very short. And there goes the sack. These are the core structures, and now it's time to start repairing the posterior wall. And now we are lateralizing the core to the right side or the lateral side. And at the same time, we have to hold external oblique aponeurosis with the artery force. As you can see, there is the edge of the external oblique aponeurosis. My cord is on right side or you can say on lateral side. And this is the conjoint tendon. Hope you can appreciate it very clearly. These are the fibers of the conjoint tendon. Now we are taking a bite of the conjoint tendon and start repairing it with the lower lip of the external oblique aponeurosis. On the lateral side of course try to take a good bite while repairing the posterior wall and avoid taking the external oblique aponeurosis And by tying this knot, we just create a new deep inguinal ring. You can easily appreciate the deep inguinal ring from where the cord is arising. And now we'll continue the posterior wall repair in the same fashion. Try to avoid any bite on the external oblique aperiodosis to avoid any problem while fixing the mesh and closing the external oblique aperiodosis. Always remove the lengthen back before tying your suture as it may sometimes cause a loose suture that will open just after the surgery And this is the last suture for the repair of posterior wall.
The Sucha help in awarding any direct hernia in future and also give some strength to the posterior wall. And by this knot, we just conclude with the repair of posterior wall. Well, you can see this is the deep ring that we have just formed by repairing the posterior wall. There are those sutures. And this is the pubic tubercle. I'm hitting the bone with the forcep. This one is the pubic tubercle, and we'll take an anchor suture to fix the mesh just later to pubic tubercle. Try to avoid taking suture on the pubic tubercle. Uh, some of the patient complain continuous pain and the discomfort in post-operative period and now we'll start fixing the mesh the later side of the mesh to the lower lip of the external oblique aponeurosis Try to take a small bite of external oblique aponeurosis so that you can easily close the aponeurosis after concluding the mesh fixation. The main idea behind taking the, these later sutures are to avoid the migration of the mesh into the peritoneal cavity or into the rectum. And now we have reached up to the deep venal ring. As you can appreciate and now by this we'll start cutting down the mesh to fit into the approximated area and we have done the fish tailing around the deep ring so as to give it a strength and avoid any other possible hernias in the later future and now we are just pushing the mesh behind the deep ring vinyl ring Try to avoid any wrinkle on the mesh as patient might complain of pain and discomfort just after the post-operative period. As you can see my mesh is completely settled down and now we'll start taking the suture just behind the deep ring crossing the both of the flap of the mesh. These sutures are also considered as the anchor suture as the first anchor suture we have taken just later to the pubic tubercle and this one is the second one and now we'll start fixing the mesh to the medial side I'm taking a small bite of the lower lip of the external oblique aponeurosis and the edge of the mesh two or three sutures in this area will be considered enough as we have taken two anchor sutures, three or four sutures at the lateral side and here two or three sutures are more than enough. Here also try to avoid taking a large bite of the lower lip of the external oblique aponeurosis as it may cause problem while repairing the flap and now by this knot we just finish with the mesh fixation now we are confirming the core by pulling the testes down and 
and now we'll start repairing the external oblique aponeurosis as you can see that i'm holding the edge of the external oblique aponeurosis with the artery forcer you can use vicryl 20 vicryl 10 or any other absorbable suture that's entirely up to you we are closing the external oblique aponeurosis with continuous suture well some surgeons prefer interrupted suture but there is no hard and fast rule for that try to avoid tearing of the external oblique aponeurosis by taking some small bites as large bite may tear it very easily and with this suture we are in process of making a new superficial ring and by tying this knot we have just created a new superficial ring Now we are taking some interrupted suture to approximate the subcutaneous tissue and to give strength to the incision that we have given starting to gain access into the cavity. And now we have start closing the skin with nylon 20. You can take nylon 20, 30, nylon 10, whatever you like. We are closing the skin with metra suture. Well, you can take interrupt suture also. Well, I prefer metra sutures as it gives strength to the subcutaneous tissue and also provide a very linear scar. And by this suture, we just conclude with our surgery. Hope you like the video. If you like the video, just hit that like button. See you soon. Thank you very much.